Hey guys, hope you're all well. Um, today we are going to be going through the monogastric digestive system. Now, in the direction packet, it does go through all of the information that I'm going through right now in written form. Um, so you do have those notes, so to speak, at your fingertips. However, I know a lot of you learn best if someone is explaining it to you. So I'm going to explain it to you so you've got a different perspective. So there are two different types of digestive systems in two classifications of digestive systems. There are more than that, but two classifications. One is monogastric and the other is polygastric. Now, if we take down all right, guys, if we take down those roots of those words, mono means one, and poly means more than one. Gastric is referring to the stomach. So, monogastric means one stomach, and polygastric means more than one stomach. Now, this is a bit misleading, but we'll go through that in the polygastric learning segment, um, not so much in this segment. Humans are monogastric, so we have one stomach. So the picture in front of me is a picture of a dog, and it's, it's an example of a monogastric digestive system. This dog has one stomach. It's right there. Um, but digestion doesn't start in the stomach, so we're going to start with where digestion starts. The first step of eating and digesting food is actually eating it. And what it is called putting food in an animal's mouth is prehension. That's the method an animal uses to get food to their mouth. For example, humans' method of prehension is their hands. Dogs use their teeth. Elephants, they use their trunk. Cows, they use their lips. Um, it varies per species. Once the food is in the mouth, so dog tears apart a meat carcass and has food in his mouth or her mouth. Um, mastication occurs. Mastication is another word for chewing. This is a form of mechanical digestion. So mechanical digestion is that physical acts that's chewing, it's smashing, that sort of thing. Um, mastication is an example of that mechanical digestion. But in the mouth, physical digestion is not the only thing that is taking place. There's also some chemical digestion. And chemical digestion is the use of chemicals such as enzymes to break down food into basic nutrients. Usually, mechanical digestion is working to get food to smaller particles, but chemical digestion is getting it down to more of those atom-sized particles. So, while we're still in the mouth, chemical digestion begins. Saliva contains an enzyme called amylase. You know amylase is, a, is an enzyme because it ends with the A-S-E um, suffix. So amylase breaks down amylose, and amylose is a type of sugar. That's the part I want you to remember is that amylase breaks down a sugar. Uh, this is why you can put hard candy in your mouth and it will dissolve. So if you're sucking on a sucker, it's going to dissolve in your mouth because it's sugar. After food has been broken down by mastication and amylase, it is swallowed. When it swallows, it's going to travel through, so we're swallowing it, it's going to travel through the esophagus. And the esophagus is a long tube with muscles that leads to the stomach. Here's the stomach. Now remember, a dog is monogastric, so it only has one compartment in its stomach. So, pretty basic to go through. In the stomach, a couple things occur. 
we have mechanical digestion. Um, the stomach is muscular, so it's expanding, contracting, moving around so that your food will mix. And it's mixing for that chemical digestion to continue. Um, the stomach contains hydrochloric acid, which can be abbreviated HCL. This helps break down food and destroy pathogens such as bacteria. So this is also a line of defense in your immune system because sometimes there's a little bacteria in our food. Now, if there's too much bacteria, such as E. coli, um, it will get you sick, but your stomach acid can help destroy that bacteria. There's also some gut bacteria that lives in your stomach and helps digest food, but more in depth than really what we're going with this. Um, one of the main things is hydrochloric acid. Um, there's also a chemical called pepsin, and this aids in chemical digestion. Pepsin breaks down proteins. So pepsin, proteins, that's something that I want you to remember there. Um, hydrochloric acid and pepsin mix together and they, it creates stomach acid. So when people are talking about stomach acid, a lot of times they'll be like, oh, it's the same thing as hydrochloric acid. It mostly, yes, most of stomach acid has hydrochloric acid, but it also has pepsin and a few other enzymes, chemicals in it. Um, pepsin is the big one we're focusing on. So after spending time in the stomach, food will go to the small intestine. So it travels out of the stomach and into the small intestine, which is right here. The small intestine is thin diameter wise, but it's actually really long. In humans, it's about 22 feet. Obviously, this is gonna vary per species. Um, we're not gonna have the same amount of long intestine, or long intestine, sorry, um, small intestine as, say, a giraffe would. But, on the small intestine is where the majority of nutrients are absorbed. It is mostly chemical digestion that occurs in the small intestine. Um, so the small intestine is lined, the inside of the small intestine is lined by villi, which look like tiny fingers. As villi, it helps increase the surface area of the small intestine, which allows for more absorption. After the small intestine, so small intestine, villi, um, then it has different enzymes in it, like lipase helps digest fats, um, and other enzymes to help break things down so it can be absorbed by that villi. What isn't absorbed will pass through this small intestine and go into the large intestine. The large intestine is a lot shorter than the small intestine but the diameter is a lot wider. So what is left by this point is a lot of water and undigestible material. So there's a little nutrient absorption in the large intestine, but not much. Um, the main function of the large intestine is to absorb water. This is an important job. If it absorbs too much, the animal will become constipated. So uh, have you, have you any of you seen that new movie, Constipation? Ah, yeah, well, it hasn't come out yet. Um, so, obviously, animal doesn't want to be constipated, so it needs some liquid left in its feces. Um, but if it doesn't absorb enough, the animal will have diarrhea and become dehydrated. The leftover material will travel through the rectum. And exit the body through, so it travels through the rectum, which is kind of that end area, and then exits the body through the anus. Um, most of what is left in the feces, there's some water, there's undigested food, there's slough cells, and slough cells are like dead cells, so this is passing through, there's dead cells that it'll actually carry with it. Um, that's why fiber is actually really important in your diet, and we'll talk more about that with nutrients. But fiber has a lot of... Fiber is not digestible, particularly by most species. Um, so, like, if you eat hay, you're not going to be able to digest it. Your dog eats hay, not going to be able to digest it. Um, and we aren't supposed to eat straight-up hay. 
but like a lavender salad's undigestible. And so that will mostly travel through your digestive system and help clean out some of those dead cells or any cells that are just like chilling out and haven't gotten all the way through. Um, so slough cells are dead cells. And then it also helps carry out bacteria, both living and dead. So all of that occurs. Now, there are a couple other organs that help and are key players of the digestive system. They aren't that direct too between mouth and anus, but they still matter. So for example, the liver produces bile that helps digest lipids. And lipids are fats. Again, we'll talk more about those in nutrition. Um, the gallbladder stores the bile that the liver produces before it's sent to the small intestine. So the gallbladder is like in this ish area. Um, the pancreas, which unfortunately is not on this diagram, um, but what it does is it store, whoops, oh, I'm sorry, produces an enzyme that helps break down nutrients. So the pancreas will produce an enzyme to help break down nutrients, produces sodium bicarbonate, and this will help neutralize stomach acid. And last but not least, it produces insulin, which regulates blood sugar. So people who have diabetes often have an issue with their pancreas um, and its production of insulin, which helps regulate in your blood. You'll have sugar that cells will only absorb if insulin is present to tell them to absorb it. Um, and a lot of people with diabetes, they either don't produce insulin or their cells ignore insulin because they're like, meh, you always are there. I'm just going to ignore you. And if you're more interested in how insulin works, let me know and we'll do a lesson on that. Um, because I find it interesting, but it's not necessarily on one of those things that when I'm condensing what we're still learning in animal science, we really, really, really have to cover. So as is, I'm not going to do anything with it, but know that it exists. So what you're going to do now is you are going to do a purpose games where you're going to practice labeling the digestive system. Really basic, think esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, anus. Very basic labeling. Um, and then taking a practice quiz um, about the digestive system. And then last but not least, there is a there is a digestive system quiz on Schoology for you to submit. So if you want to refer back to any of this, remember in that packet, there's that note sheet to your desire. Have a great day, and I'll see you later.